Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. It's growing very, very nicely, and I'm so happy with all the comments and responses I've had so far. So much appreciated to every single one of those people that have subscribed, as well as have made the effort to make a comment, whether it's good or bad. Um, right, let's talk about high loan to value mortgages and, and what's happening with the market right now and some of the shenanigans that's, that's going on with some of the lenders. So if you are someone who's looking to get onto the property market, from a residential perspective and, and I've got minimal deposits, um, times are very, very tough. I can't, I mean, the last time it was like this was probably around the crash uh, of 2007, 2008, where uh, loan to values were affected. But basically a few months ago, because of COVID, a lot of the major players within the high loan to value market pulled away from that. Um, and so what's happened is it left only a few brave soul lenders uh, to sort of plow on. Um, I think Nationwide went out of the market, came back in with a 90%, um, and I think um, you've got uh, HSBC were in, there, were in there for a long time, they've pulled out of it now, um, and you've got various other lenders coming in and coming out. Now let me tell you how, the, how this has affected things. Um, I did a video about three months ago, I think two and a half months ago, saying, look guys, if you can, save up that 15% deposit, save that extra 5%. It makes a big difference from a pricing perspective, um, uh, from a product perspective, because essentially, because there's less competition out there, the lenders are not that competitive uh, in the product range, and they're almost, you know, they don't wanna be in that market. They basically don't wanna be in that market, and the ones that are, bless their souls, they're just getting inundated with too much business and that's affecting their service and all sorts of things that are happening. Now, um, we've seen uh, an, an emergence of smaller lenders that granted by their own admission cannot cope with the business, um, but they like the, they like the money, they like the margins because essentially Bank of England base rate is at the all time low, yet we're seeing, um, uh, you know, 85, sorry, 90% products at three and a half percent, 3.56%, 3.59%. So, you know, where, you know, pre-pandemic, that would have been around about two, two and a bit. So um, we've seen, you know, lenders trying to make some margin. Now, um, do I agree with this? Obviously, it's a, we're in a capitalist world and, you know, people can take advantage of it. And in, in one hand, you can say, look, they are coming up with the goods, you know, where all the other lenders are running for the hills, these lenders have actually made a calculated risk and said, right, okay, we can write X amount of business for this margin. Um, so you have got them coming in, but you know, you, you're, in the, you're in the process whereby I don't think the lenders quite understand what's involved when you're actually advising on mortgages. So we've got several lenders now that are coming in with short-term 90% mortgage deals. So uh, first of all, clap for them to come into the market and be brave enough to come into the market. Although, like I said, the products are uncompetitive uh, to historic, and when you look back, historical at 90% loan to values. Um, however, they are coming out with it. But m what my gripe is, is they're coming out with it like for a weekend or for one day special. I mean, this is not, you know, we're not, we're not talking about, you know, Tesco's fruit and veg oil here. We're talking about a regulated product which needs to be advised on, which you need to do your compliance documents. You need to have a conversation with a client. We need to, some of these lenders may not be household names. So you need to have that discussion with the client to say, this is the lender that's coming out with this product. This is the situation. Um, this is the terms of business for the lender or, or key facts illustration or um, the illustration for the lender. Run through the compliance, maybe, maybe gather some more up-to-date bank statements because the last time they were going to go for a 90% deal, the lender pulled out halfway through. So um, I'm not quite sure, I'm not convinced of this, you know, one day because what happens is all these, all these brokers, what they're going to do is without doing the due diligence, without doing the proper work, what they're going to do is they're just going to submit application to these lenders, okay? Without gathering all the up-to-date stuff, they're just going to start submitting these uh, applications to lock in the rates and then deal with the things later on. Uh, and, and what would happen is the lenders processing ours will then start getting bogged down with, you know, requesting for various documents, okay? And they're just gonna get bogged down in processing. Um, so I'm not sure, uh, obviously some people will win, a lot of people will lose out of it. And, and I just think a more orderly process is probably gonna work out better. But unfortunately, you're not gonna have that because the smaller lenders that are doing these type of things, um, they just haven't got the capacity to deal with volume. 
So if you are looking for a 90% loan to value mortgage, um, the, the problems are, these are the problems, you know. So no matter who your broker is, um, these are the fundamental problems behind the scenes. What's going on is lenders are pulling products, they're only coming up with products for, for a couple of days, if it's high loan to value, even sometimes low loan to value. We've seen uh, even at 85%, so okay, two and a half months ago, I said to guys, guys, 85% is a lot more competitive, it's a lot better. First of all, since that video, we've probably seen major lenders reprice probably about three to four times. So they've repriced up their 85% rates three or four times. And one of the biggest gripes I get now is when I send a quote to somebody and maybe a week later they come back and go, right, we're ready now, here's my documentation. And, and then I requote them, they go, well, why has it gone up? So well, actually, rates are going up. You know, people are lenders are changing rates, and it's almost having that conversation. And they almost take it personally. Well, well now I'm ready. They're, they're moving their price. You know, they're crooks. We say no. Well, actually, they're they're responding to their own strategies out there. So um, you know, products are changing almost on a daily basis. So what you get quoted today may not be the product you apply on maybe in four days' time or three days' time, um, unless generally you've locked in. Uh, and you've submitted that application, you've locked in that rate, nothing's given, okay? So a decision in principle, just because you get a decision in principle on a rate, that doesn't mean you're gonna apply on that rate unless you've found the property and you've got the documentation and the broker um, can submit the application. So um, these are the challenging times at the moment. These are the challenges that brokers and clients are coming by. I mean, I've got many clients right now that simply have not got the additional 5% deposit. So they're looking at 90% deposit. Now, if you're in a, in London and you're looking at a 90% deal, a lot of those 90% deals do not do flats. A lot of them. There are one or two that will, but a lot of them will not. So, you know, you're stuffed. You might as well wait. You've got to wait. Um, where, it's funny enough, I did a video at the same time, I think it's about two and a half months ago, I did a video and I said, look, I think when the downturn does come eventually, uh, and it does start affecting the, the property market, um, help to buy is not gonna bear very well. Um, however, throughout this phase of um, not having access to high loan to value products, what you've seen is an emergence of help to buy because help to buy essentially is 20%, from, well, outside of London is 20% from the government loan and then 5% deposit. So those, it means it's a 75% loan to value product. So what you've seen is the help to buy builders and help to buy brokers and, and, and generally our own case counts for help to buy has, has gone up quite a lot because of the lack of availability of products out there. Uh, just touching on 85% loan to value, okay? So as had a knock on effect. So 90% loan to value products have, have uh, diminished you know, massively. 85% loan to value products with the lenders that are lending. What I mean by that is, look, there's lots of lenders out there. We've got access to 80 odd lenders out there, okay? But I would tell you, majority of our business is written with, I don't know, seven lenders probably, eight lenders, okay? No more than that. So, because they are doing the, the, the big lenders, you know, you're looking at the Halifaxes, you're looking at the Barclays, those type of lenders, okay? What I've seen is Barclays have pulled their 85% for all of their two year product. They're only offering it for five years. Can you believe that? Barclays only offering um, an 85% product currently, as I know, um, they're only doing it on a five year basis. So why would you want to get yourself locked in? A lot of people may not want to get themselves locked in with early repayment charges for Barclays. Um, they've also tweaked their um, um, income multiples and, and affordability, um, and they've tweaked it down. So um, you're not you're not uh, able to uh, borrow as much as before, and that's one thing. Halifax, big lender, monster of a lender, part of the Lloyd's Banking Group, they pulled their two year. Uh, products, 85% products. Granted, I saw yesterday they've actually come back in with a three-year 85% um, uh, product. They've always had their five-year 85% product. So guys, these are changing and these are not small little building societies or ambiguous sort of lenders. Out. These are major banks, organizations, pillars of our society almost in terms of um, uh, the, the financial world. Um, they are being very, very cautious. Now, um, there's two things. I mean, it's quite funny. Um, I read an article by uh, one of the brokers in, in one of the trade magazines yesterday saying, look, brokers commenting on the economy and brokers commenting on the market, who are they to say it? They should stay in their own lanes. And 
in, in, in one point, he's right because we're not economists and, and, and you know, uh, right now it's not a guaranteed that the property market's going to be affected massively. You know, it could do and there are big signs that it may do, but certainly brokers are not, um, uh, we're not economists. But what I will say is um, when you're looking at the trends out there, you're noticing lenders, major lenders being a little bit more nervous around high loan to value products out there. Now, smaller lenders, there was an article by a sales director for one of the smaller lenders out there, and he said, look, we're not actually worried about the downturn of the property. It's just around the funds, costing of funds, and not having enough competition in the market. That's why we're not in the 90%. You know, if there were more lenders to share the burden, I suppose, we would be in the market for longer. So there are lots of different strategies. There's lots of different um, uh, thoughts around that. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think um, the, the fact that loan to, high loan to value uh, products are, are not available is the sign of the lenders being cautious? Or do you think they're just taking the money? At the end of the day, they're taking very, very cheap money from the Bank of England, and then they are selling that money as a, as a form of a mortgage to you guys for, you know, if they've got it for 1% or whatever, whatever, 0.1%, and they're giving you mortgages for three and a half percent on a on a five year fixed, uh, and that's also another point. A lot of those ninety percent products out there, they're only five year fixes, so you're almost getting punished um, for five years because right now you didn't have that five percent deposit. And think about that. And that's what I would tell tell my clients to say. Look, guys, can you make it? Can you make that additional five percent? Can you go and borrow that from family? Because you're almost locking yourself in on a high rate right now for five years because you didn't have the additional 5%. If you're comfortable with that and you believe that that's a strategy at the end of the day, it's better than paying rent or living with family and you're, you think you can afford it and the affordability fits, do it. But if you think you can come up with the 5% in a few months time, then you know, make your decision there. So I hope you found it useful just to give you an update on what's going on with this 90% loan to value market. It is absolute madness. And guys, don't take it out on your brokers. Um, this is coming from the lenders, okay? It's definitely coming from the lenders. So watch out, there's gonna be a lot of turbulence as well. And this is not gonna end. I don't think it's gonna get better. Um, so let's see, let's see how we get on. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching these videos. Like subscribe let me know what you think about the market let me know if the lenders are being greedy let me know if um, you know, if you believe that the market's taking a downturn I've, a I've actually done a poll and I will do a, a go through the results in regards to what my audience thinks about what the property market's going to do um, so thank you so much and take care all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.